What is going on everybody? Thank you for tuning into today's video. Today I want to talk to you guys about how I'm starting my web design agency in 2021. For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Joe. I'm just a normal guy. I spontaneously signed up for a coding boot camp. Here on my channel, I like to talk about my experiences and how that's been. I'm currently working for a marketing agency full-time. I'm doing social media marketing, lead generation, web design, but I'm also allowed to do side work. And so today I just wanna share with you guys the steps that I'm taking to grow my web design business. I'm doing it part-time right now, but I am hoping it'll grow into something a little bit more serious. I just wanna share with you guys the, the tools that I use, the process that I follow to find new clients, find inspiration to build up a prototype and then to finally build a product that I can sell to a client. I'm hoping it will give you guys some motivation or a little bit of inspiration, get your guys' mind thinking a little bit on how you guys can now go out and create your own web design agency, how you can go out, start building websites and start selling them to make extra money. One more thing, I am not sponsored by any of these companies that I talk about. I do hope that sometime in the future I will become an affiliate for some of these companies. But as of right now, I'm being totally genuine. These are just the products that I love. These are the products that I use. So by the time you're watching this video, I may be an affiliate. So I'm gonna have some links down below and I'd really appreciate it if you guys check those out. So the first question, something I get asked all the time is where do I find clients? Some of you guys might already know the answer to this. And some of you guys might think that I'm going to drop some little nugget on the best place to find new clients. But the reality is for the first dozen, websites I sold. I sold them to friends and family. Promise you that that's the best place to start. The first websites that I built, they were really ugly. They, they were really, really ugly. But like I said, they were friends, they were for family. It almost felt like I actually had to beg people to let me build them a website. I built out plenty of websites. I definitely was not proud of some of my early work. And as I started to get a little bit better, perfect my skill, it eventually moved to a point where now people are willing to pay thousands of dollars for the websites that I built for them. As I started to build websites for friends and family, I started to have their friends and family start to ask them, you know, who made your website? Who made this? This looks really good. They definitely didn't say that for my early websites, but as I started to get better, more and more people started to notice my work and they're like, hey, like this looks good. Who built this for you? Everyone I was making websites for, like I said, was just friends and family. It took a really long time before I started actually building websites for total strangers. Even now, a lot of the people that I'm building websites for they're strangers to me, but they're still friends of friends. And so it's, it's starting to expand out to other people, but you really do need to just start with the people that you know. And now that my designs are getting a little bit better, I feel more confident in sharing my work on social media and on Facebook. At first, nobody really cared that I was a web developer, but now that they're starting to see my work, they're wanting to choose me over somebody else. I told you guys before that I went through a coding boot camp. Shortly after I got out, I had it made up in my mind that when I make a website, I have to type everything out line by line. I had to build every website from scratch. I, that's something that I agree and I disagree with. If you are trying to become like a full stack developer, if you're trying to become an actual programmer, you're definitely gonna wanna build some full stack projects. Build everything from scratch so that you can show your employers what you've built. When it comes to building websites that you're selling to clients, I think things are a little bit different. I don't personally think that you need to build every single website from scratch. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that are gonna disagree with me on this. I understand where they're coming from, but ever since I started doing freelance work, I've used these software builders for all of my work. I've used Squarespace, I've used Wix, I've used Shopify. My personal favorite is I've used Webflow. There's a lot of people out there that don't like these website builders because they don't give you the full range of customization that you can get with code. So that's why I use Webflow. And again, I am not sponsored by Webflow. I am just a huge fan of Webflow. Honestly, I think that the reason that I am taking my web design business more seriously is because of what Webflow has to offer. If you guys are not familiar with Webflow, essentially it is a way of building websites using HTML and CSS, but instead of actually typing out the, the code line by line, you're able to use an interface where you're able to click buttons, you're able to add div tags, 
sections, images, anything that's CSS. You can add Flexbox, you can change the colors, you can do grid, you can change the positioning. It's a really awesome feature, something that I really, really love. I love that I can, I can bill my clients directly through Webflow. I can charge them, whether that's a one-time charge of a few thousand dollars, or if I'm charging them monthly, I can do it directly through Webflow. There's, there's a lot of really cool features that are perfect for freelancers. And it's like I said, it's something that I absolutely love. I can build custom websites from the ground up. There's free UI kits, there's free templates, there's paid templates. These are all methods that I've used before. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that would disagree with me when it comes to using something like a template. I do, I understand the satisfaction of creating a website from scratch. I also understand that I just went through a coding boot camp and I learned all the fundamentals of code and how to build a website. But I also understand the importance of a satisfied client. A happy client leads to more clients. And what's the real goal here? There really is no real goal here. If you want to build websites from the ground up and become a master developer, do that. If you want to buy templates and turn around and sell them for more money, do that. There really is no right or wrong way of building and selling websites. Next up, I want to talk to you guys about inspiration. Okay, where do I find inspiration for the websites that I'm gonna sell? One of the problems that I ran into a long time ago, when I started getting into code and designing websites, I quickly realized that it was really easy for me to think up a beautiful website. I could think of something that looked really good. I had a much harder time taking that imaginary website and actually building it out. It's, it's kind of like painting, you know? I can think of a beautiful painting, but I have a much harder time actually painting that out. And that is where inspiration comes in. At this point in my career, I feed off of other people's work and other people's inspiration. I love spending time browsing through other people's work, finding things that I like, rebuilding them with my own twist on them. But the thing is, knowing where to find inspiration is really, really important. If I was building a website for a dentist's office, for example, when I first started, I would just Google image doctor office website or dentist office website. And then I would just look through the images and see what I see. When I first looked at it, I thought, oh, these websites all look really good. And so I started to replicate those and they, I promise you they don't look good. If that's what you're doing, stop. I promise you there is a much better way to find website inspiration. My personal favorite place to look for website inspiration is a website called dribble.com. That's D-R-I-B-B-B-L-E. This is, it's a really awesome website. It's a place where designers can showcase their work. You can, there's, there's posters, there's graphics, there's logos, and of course there's web design. Okay, I love, I love looking through other people's web design. So after I find inspiration for a website, I generally like to make up some kind of prototype of the website, of the design. So when I'm not using a template and I'm building out the actual prototype, my favorite tool to use is called Figma, F-I-G-M-A. This has been a really awesome software. It's free to use. You can use Figma to plan out your websites. You can use it to make graphics. I've been able to use Figma for a lot of things. I've been able to build out entire websites, take this link, share it with the client, have them approve it on here and then I turn around and build it on Webflow. Or there's been other times where I don't even build it out on here, like I said, I'll use a template, but I'll come back to something like Figma and I will create graphics or images. I'm currently putting together a website for my YouTube channel and I have a couple really cool animated graphics that I have on my homepage and those are graphics that I originally created here in Figma and then I copied over into Webflow. Another tool that I am a huge fan of, this is something that I, I actually just somewhat recently started to use and I'm a little bit upset at myself for not using this earlier. That's canva.com, C-A-N-V-A. Okay, this is another really good website. You can kind of use it the same thing like you were using for Figma. This is a great place for you to find graphics and animations. There is a free option and there are a lot of really good graphics here in the free option. I will admit I do have the paid version and it is absolutely money well spent. They have the best graphics, they have the best images. It just kind of feels like it's my all-in-one place. I go there if I'm looking for something a little additional to add to my website. I go to Canva. Highly recommend it. 
awesome website. So again, I just want to give a list of everything that I use. I use Webflow to build my projects. I use Figma to prototype the projects. I use Canva to create graphics, find images, and I use Dribbble for inspiration. Okay, these are four websites that I highly recommend you bookmark. These are gonna be great resources for you in starting your web design career. Again, these are not the only options. There's a million different ways to make websites. This is what I'm doing, this is what I'm using. Like I said, I'm putting together a website for my YouTube channel. So if you guys wanna know more about me, if you guys wanna go learn more about me, you guys wanna find a way to get in contact about me, you guys can go check that out. I did add a blog to my website, and I will admit I have zero experience with blogging, but I guess that that's something I'm going to pick up. It's probably just going to be about random things, you know, my favorite coding music, maybe my favorite YouTubers, how I spend my freelance money, I don't really know. Something I'm just kind of winging, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any thoughts or questions, like I said, check out my website, leave a comment down below. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I will catch you guys on the next video.